Okay, so now we're here at Shiro of Japan and Car Place. Now this place has been here forever, folks, and I've driven past it like a million and one times, but I'm finally here. Incredible looking place. It's got some really incredible chefs here as well, right, for a long time. And I'm here with Peter. Peter pretty much runs the show here, right? Yes. So tell us a little bit about this place. If people haven't been here, what's so special uh, about Shiro of Japan? Well, what's so special about us is we started here and I took over the business uh, 17 years ago, but the actual restaurant uh, has been here since 1972, which is one of the first Japanese restaurants wow. on Long Island. My partner, Hiro, opened up the first uh, sushi restaurant on Long Island 40 years ago in 1979. So when you think about the history uh, uh, of sushi and stuff, Hiro Ishikawa basically brought Sushi too long, I don't So they, they were the ones that pretty much pioneered it because, and then it started like wildfires, right? You know, a lot popped up, maybe not the best, mm -hmm. but here they're traditionally serving the food that has been consistent pretty much, right, since the 70s. Yes, yeah. Which and is pretty incredible because to say a restaurant's been around 45 years is, is, is unheard of. Yeah. You know? And basically, I mean, because of Hero's uh, long history of, <laughs> he was born in Japan, came over, worked as a busboy worked his way up through uh, New York, finally bought his own restaurant. Um, he's very concerned with our food being traditional Japanese, right. you know, and not so much Americanized exactly. Japanese. Exactly, because there is so, a difference, like yeah. just about anything yeah. has been touched, right? Exactly. You, you Americanize it too much, you just take the, the whole uh, ethnicity out of it. You know, you take the, you know, foods are only indigenous to that region when they are true foods from that region. You know, when they come here, they start, it's like saying, go to Italy and get an ala vodka sauce. There's no such thing. But here, you know, they've, they've made it into this Italian special. So what do we got going on today? So if I understand, we're going to be tasting some incredible sushi, hibachi, and we're doing some drink specials here, Yes, right? we're going to start with um, some hibachi. We're doing a special actually right now called East Meets West. And okay. we have two steak specials, um, which are very popular right now. Um, one is a uh, Wagyu mm -hmm. uh, filet mignon on the uh, hibachi grill. And then one, we actually um, started copying an American-style oh, nice. steak. Okay. All right, so we do a 16-ounce sirloin, and it's sliced and placed in a sizzling platter off the hibachi grill. And then we're going to do some uh, nice. authentic nigiri from the sushi department. Sounds good. So up next... If you're hungry, this is the place to be, but we're going to test it out and see what all the hype is about on Taste This. So we're here. We're getting ready at the first sushi station here. I'm here with Hiro, who's also the owner. This guy, I heard, is incredible with his sushi and techniques. Now, you know Morimoto, right? Okay, now I've filmed up with Morimoto many times. I heard that this guy's sushi is incredible. He's going to show us here today. What are you going to show us? Today? We're just showing like how we actually trying to show traditional you know, sushi. Traditional sushi. like American nice sushi. Just traditional. Traditional, traditional sushi what you would get like here. Need today. Perfect. You know, awesome. Yeah. So what do you get started with? Uh, maybe I took a few pieces of uh, tuna. All right. Uh, today I show you just uh, three kind of uh, uh, fish, like the salmon and the uh, sunapa from Japan and the tuna fish. All right, so just a nigiri. And also I show you a little, you know, very cute sushi for uh, maybe party or, uh, you know, I mean, I, I just want to show not too many people do them in uh, New York. So I have to show you guys, all right? So I'm cutting a uh, cutting a uh, uh, salmon for uh, for uh, nigiri. It's a white fish from Japan yesterday. So pretty. So, that, so you pretty go fresh. to the market fresh every day and get this, right? Yes, I do like uh, three times a week. That's great. To, uh, Fruit on fish market.
So sushi is uh, between rice and the fish. So rice is very important for, uh, for sushi. Mm -hmm. It's uh, not too hard, not too soft. And uh, also vinegar, I have to mix with vinegar, which is uh, each restaurant has a different recipe. Instead of uh, using uh, uh, just a finger, hand, I put in uh, plastic. Oh, nice. Wow, look at that. This is temari sushi, which is a bowl. Temari means small bowl. So make it looks like a small bowl instead of like a this shape, nigiri shape. This is actually nigiri shape. But this is temari. Japanese restaurant a food is not only food e eating like a Watching like a presentation is very important for us. So, color, what color, or you know, just to make sure it's beautiful, like a, make sure customer has appetite. This is the sea urchin right yeah, here. This is come from California. So one of the things that are really popular here at this place and the hibachi station is a talented chef like this. That is incredible. Now, did you ever drop one of these? Or? Uh, not yet, not yet. <laughs> no, we have a lot of practice on this, so that's why we use definitely very, very sharp materials. You know, it's very sharp and sharp, so I have to curve, you know, and I do practice a lot. Well, the skill sure, is definitely show. So I have to make sure, you know, customers happy, enjoy their entertainment. That's why. Perfect. Excellent. So what do we do to get started? What are we going to have here today? Ah, we start with the fire. So everybody loves, especially kids. Kids love fire. Okay, so we're going to make some smiley face, and then we'll start, like, cook a little bit. Look at this. Very nice. Okay, so this is a little bit of smiling. So, a little gasoline. Nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's about that. Like this. Fire ready. You'll be careful what you ever want to. Woo! Everybody okay? Yeah? Nobody's scared? Nah. That's how you get a party started. Look <laughs> at the kids love. It's love to buy. Okay, it's like a vegetables? Ah, that's a first vegetable. They're really, really good. Let's put some onions. Right. Let's go, let's make it the best part of the show. We have the best steak over here, look at this. That's a 16 ounce steak. We season it with salt, pepper, and garlic. That's a Wagyu filet mignon. That's wonderful. Ready? 
ready? Now we'll serve it to the customer. So I'm here with LES, and along comes with every great meal, of course, you have to have a great drink, right? And in this case, my man here, the master mixologist, is going to show you a concoction that is popular here at Shiro of Japan. So what are we making here today? I make a Tokyo sunset. Okay. And we can't forget about our sea straws in there, too. They're aluminum straws that are going to go inside these drinks. Really incredible product. Coming with vodka, coconut rum. Midori. And pineapple juice. So, you know, there really is a lot of great benefits with using uh, a sea straw, aluminum straw, as opposed to those, uh, you know, plastic straws that are pretty much uh, outlawed and uh, totally unsanitary for you. So these are protecting the environment, and there's so many great things about them, uh, and they're going right in this concoction, this famous drink done by my master mixologist here. I'd like to talk to you about the sea straw. Help protect the reef, help protect marine life. An alternative to plastic, paper, glass, and stainless steel drinking straws. It's marine-grade, reef-friendly, aluminum 6063-T5. NSF-certified colors for food zone application, metal-free dyes. Contains no heavy metals determined by the NSF. The sea straws are both easy to use, eye-catching, and very easy to clean. Unlike other straws with curves or bent edges, the sea straw is easy to clean for sanitary purposes. What I really like about the sea straw is sea straws, unlike plastic, will sink upon entry into any water supply and actually attract growth or organic marine life, barnacles, sponges, or coral. So if you're looking for a clean alternative to the plain Jane plastic straws, give sea straw a try. Check them out, folks. Their website is www.c-straw.com.
So thank you for watching this fun-filled episode of Taste This TV. I'm your host, Chef Joseph, and ever remember there are no rules in cooking. Taste this.